Salutations ladies and gentlemen, Luke Innes here. Time to elaborate on the uh, DVD collection again. Not far now. Um, yeah, we're wrapping up on the letter S uh, today is what we're doing. Um, so yeah, like I say, probably after this there'll be two more parts where I cover um, the next sort of, you know, the rest of the alphabet and then I'm going to have to go around and show you all the things I've bought since I started this series, um, like five months ago or whatever it is now. Um, but anyway, uh, we'll get we'll get to it. Um, plug for the podcast quickly before we start. Link in the description. It's called Ironcast. It's fantastic. I'd love you to all check it out. But let's get on with it anyway. Um, so first up, Scarecrow. Now, I just watched this for the first time this morning, actually. Um, this is a Sci-Fi Channel original um, from 2013, I believe. Um, and it's a kind of monster slasher supernatural movie. Um, you know, there's this um, ghost of like a scarecrow. Um, who you can sort of see on the cover there, that kind of haunts um, this group of uh, children and like a teacher who are there on like a, uh, a weekend detention. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's like an old curse that kind of comes back to attack them. It was okay. Um, I didn't hate it. <laughs> I didn't love it either, but you know, it's, it's uh, kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, wasn't that offensive to me? I didn't, I didn't dislike it majorly. It, as I say, by the standards of you know the Sci-Fi Channel stuff, it is pretty good. I've got to say, um, bit of CG in it that was actually quite um, well done. Um, you know, with the creature itself being most CG for most of the movie, um, it definitely was uh, fairly good by. Uh, the sort of standard that you would expect from this sort of thing but um, yeah no like I say that wasn't bad this DVD no extras on it um, unless you count scene selection but yeah so that's Scarecrow I bought this yesterday and watched it t this morning um, so yeah that's Scarecrow next up the Schwarzenegger collection now this has four of Schwarzenegger's classic movies. Now, every movie on this set is great. So we've got Predator. That's my favourite movie on the set, I've got to say. Predator, sort of action sci-fi um, with elements of uh, horror thrown in. Um, yeah, I mean, who's... You know, we all know Predator. Great movie. Um, one of my favourites from, from Schwarzenegger. Definitely in my top five. Uh, probably my least favourite on this set, but it's a pretty cool movie. Conan the Barbarian. Um, yeah, kind of uh, swords and sorcery movie. I think it was uh, Arnold's sort of film breakthrough, that movie. Um, next up, oh, what a classic, The Terminator. The first Terminator, great movie. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger plays a uh, killing machine sent back in time to destroy Sarah Connor, whose son John Connor leads um, a army of uh, freedom fighters in the um, kind of post-apocalyptic future. Um, yeah, that's a classic movie with an even more classic sequel. Next up, Commando. Um, yeah, this is one of those. <laughs> I'm not going to go so far as to say so bad it's good, but it is um, kind of shit but great, you know. Um, yeah, Commando, great stuff. Um, really entertaining. Um, John Matrix, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, his daughter is kidnapped in an attempt to force him to um, come out of retirement for some sort of job. He's like a former um, kind of... Uh, Squaddy, and um, yeah, he goes on a mission to rescue her and um, gets into a lot of fights and shit along the way, and it's really good. It's a good movie, man. I like Commando a lot. So yeah, I mean, 
in terms of like a four film box set like that, you've got a, that's a great average. You know, all of these movies are really entertaining and enjoyable. Um, especially if you quite like, I, I like Schwarzenegger. I think he did great action movies. So yeah, that's the Schwarzenegger collection. All right, next up. Scream. I reviewed this not so long ago on the channel. Won't go about on about it too long. Um, I'll leave a link to the review in the description. Uh, so yeah, um, I really like Scream. I think it's a good movie. Um, I mean, if you're interested in my thoughts, you can check out the review. Um, but yeah, no, Scream's a pretty enjoyable movie. Um, I like Wes Craven a lot, so you know, I won't I'll dwell on that too long. Next up, Scream Two. Um, yeah, this is, um, I get Scream 2 and 3 mixed up, um, a fair bit. Um, all I can tell you is that I do kind of, you know, they're both pretty good. Uh, the, the, the original three Scream movies are all on a pretty even footing. Um, I mean, um, you know, they're, they're, given that they were always intended to be a trilogy, um, that's, uh, and this is, this is Scream 3 and this is a rental, uh, copy. I think this is the one um, where, where they're making the movie. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, no, no, yeah, Scream 3, again, really cool. Um, yeah, like I say, the original Scream movies are all on a pretty even footing because they were always intended to be a trilogy. I will talk about Scream 4 when I update you on my Blu-ray collection because I've gotten that on Blu-ray since the um, original Blu-ray video, but that's for another time. Moving on, Scum with uh, Ray Winstone. Um, yeah, this is a classic um, British kind of social realism movie set in a borstal um, or a, a youth prison, if you will. Um, it's basically um, a really, really strong, um, quite disturbing um, movie about a, yeah, a guy who gets sent to a really tough youth prison and tries to keep his head down um, initially but um, the kind of the the whole kind of result of it is that he finds that he's gonna have to try and sort of take control and become the the daddy of the of the borstal is, is the whole idea um, and it's just about the kind of day-to-day -day workings of the kind of you know the corrupt the corrupt system that they're a part of and all of that sort of thing. Really powerful, very violent, very shocking movie. Um, yeah, it's great. I'd really, I'd really uh, suggest uh, checking this out. Um, it's an Alan Clark movie, so you know if you've seen like The Firm and that sort of thing, uh, this is um, kind of similar in that in terms of its style to something like that. So yeah, Scum. That's a cool movie. Next up, Secrets of the Clown. Um, this is like one of the cheapest movies I think I own. Like um, in terms of the the budget, the budget on this movie was clearly super low. Um, it's a similar sort of standard budget wise to Sickle, which are um, the the Slaughterhouse Massacre slash Sickle, which I reviewed recently. Um, and and yeah, it's kind of it's it's kind of similar in terms of its style and stuff. Um, just a really cheap American movie um, from the uh, mid two thousands. Um, in this movie, this chick has like a clown doll that's haunted or some shit, and uh, kind of um, you know some deaths start happening or something. And yeah, it's not a great movie at all. I've got to say. Um, I mean, it kind of passed the time, but that was it. It was okay. Not really much point in going on about it. I mean, this is a movie that I doubt really anyone watching this has seen. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, that's Secrets of the Clown. It's one of those things I thought I'd take a risk on it. I, bought, I got it for like, you know, 10p or something. So, yeah. Um, next up, moving on from that, we've got a bit of a classic. Seven. Um, yeah, this is sort of the movie that saved David Fincher's career, isn't it? Um, I mean, 
he did Alien Three, um, and that was uh, a very poor movie. Um, and then he moved on to do this, and this was where he kind of proved that actually he was a good filmmaker, and it probably wasn't his fault that Alien Three turned out so shitty. Um, so yeah, Seven, uh, yeah, solid movie. Um, Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman play a pair of detectives investigating a string of murders that take place. Um, each one kind of representing a different uh, one of the seven deadly sins. Um, so, like, you start off with like gluttony, and, and it goes through, um, and towards the end, it kind of gets sort of hitting closer and closer to home as they're trying to investigate this. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a really, really good movie. If you haven't seen Seven, I mean, come on, check it out. Okay, next up, Shaun of the Dead. Man, I love this movie. Um, the only thing that I don't like about Shaun of the Dead is that it's set off a string of um, uh, z zombie comedy movies, and it's kind of reached the point now where it's been like, I mean, how old is this movie? About 13 years, I think. Um, tw yeah, like 12, 13 years. And, like, this trend hasn't stopped. It's just carried on since this movie came out. Um, and at this time, it was really fun and an original idea to do um, a, a comedy movie. Because this is, this is really a comedy movie rather than a horror movie, although it borrows zombies from comedy. Um, zombies from horror, beg your pardon. Um, it's now reached the point where there are just too many zombie comedy movies. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Um, yeah, Sean, uh, his girlfriend dumps him the day before the zombie apocalypse starts, and um, he spends the uh, the day of the kind of zombies um, trying to battle for survival along with his friend and um, try to win back his ex girlfriend. So yeah, it's a pretty damn pretty damn crazy movie. Uh, Sean of the Dead. I mean, I think most people have seen this. This is widely considered a classic. Um, yeah, great stuff. Shaun of the Dead rules, man. Okay, next up, The Shining, Stanley Kubrick. Um, yeah, great movie. Uh, Jack Nicholson as um, Jack Torrance. Um, yeah, Jack Torrance, who is uh, hired to... Um, kind of uh, take care of a uh, hotel while uh, during the off season um, while he's there some very strange things start happening um, it's kind of not really clear whether he's just going insane or if there's something weird going on in the in the hotel um, but yeah I mean um, he ends up going a bit loop-de-loop -loop. Uh, yeah great movie um, the Shining is, yeah, really, really, really entertaining stuff. Um, if you haven't seen this, uh, there's a good chance you're not watching my channel because you probably have no idea that horror movies exist. Um, but yeah, no, The Shining is really cool. Um, so if you haven't seen The Shining, check that out. Next up, another Wes Craven. It's Shocker. Um, this is not a good Wes Craven, um, to be honest. I mean, it's not bad. Um got a sweet Megadeth song, um, well it's actually an Alice Cooper song but performed by Megadeth on the soundtrack. Um, it's pretty fun but it's definitely not up to Wes Craven's kind of standard. Um, I mean I think that this was trying to um, set off a franchise but obviously wasn't that successful so it didn't really happen. But the, um, I mean yeah, like I say, it's not it's not a bad movie whatsoever. It's just really weak, I guess, by kind of the standard of Wes Craven's good stuff. You know, um, you look at his kind of eighties output. You know, The Nightmare on Elm Street and um, People Under the Stairs. This doesn't measure up. In fact, I think this movie was definitely because obviously he kind of lost control of the Nightmare franchise. I think. Um, he was trying to kind of start his own uh, sort of slasher-esque sort of line um, with Shocker. Um, but yeah, no, not, not a great movie, but entertaining enough. 
Um, it's about this guy who um, is sentenced to uh, death in the electric chair, but um, he's made some sort of pact with the devil, as I recall. Um, and uh, he's his energy sort of transmits around into different people to do his bidding, um, if they will. Uh, but yeah, no, um, oh, not a terrible movie, but you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Next up, next up, Shogun Assassin. Um, this is, uh, I think this is the only Vipco I own now. Um, but yeah, this is a Vipco release. Um, it is the fully uncut version of Shogun Assassin. This is very late in Vipco's life. Uh, they released this. Um, there's actually a um, a different cover variant. Um, I think this is the slightly um, less common one. Um, this was uh, this is done with um, the kind of reference to the fact that the movie was in Kill Bill Two. Um, is is why this was redone. Um, the original printing has got a much kind of um, busier cover there's a lot more going on this is a lot plainer um but i do believe from what i've seen anyway like sort of in the wild and stuff this is the slightly less common cover um but yeah this is a really cool movie just a sort of set a really violent bloody samurai movie um i do believe this this movie actually was compiled from two movies in the um lone wolf and cub uh, series um, of Japanese samurai movies. It basically kind of cuts two of the movies together into one story, um, and uh, it's a, it's a, it's kind of like a sort of Dawn of the Dead, you know, with the, the whole zombie thing. You know, that movie kind of um, you know ramped the pace up and uh, all of that. This is a similar sort of deal, um, but yeah, no, the, the, I think this is a pretty cool movie. I wouldn't suggest going for this version unless you find it cheap like I did because um, it's kind of got that ma major screen crunch thing going on. Um, whereas there are plenty of really nice uh, widescreen versions available now. Um, but yeah, Shogun Assassin, that's a cool movie. Um, I'd suggest checking that out uh, if you're into your gore movies. Next up, The Simpsons Movie. I saw this in the cinema, uh, I think, the day it came out. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool movie, um, I've got to say. Um, I mean, it's just a shame they didn't make it, you know, when The Simpsons was kind of more peaking, you know, like in terms of like the quality, um, which would have been, you know, a fair few years before this. But this was a pretty entertaining movie, actually. I, I enjoyed the Simpsons movie. Um, yeah, f uh, a pretty fun movie. The Simpsons, um, Springfield gets covered up by, like, a dome uh, to prevent... Um, God, I haven't seen it in so long. But there's, like, a dome gets lowered over Springfield to um, basically um, kind of trap the uh, pollution coming out of, string, out of Springfield and um, the Simpson family managed to escape and they have to go on the run um, because obviously the government don't want anyone knowing that they've done this to Springfield um, so uh, yeah they try to track them down but yeah no the Simpsons movie not, not bad stuff not bad stuff next up we've got a TV series and at that a TV series I haven't seen in fucking donkeys this is season one of uh, Sledgehammer. Um, now, Sledgehammer is this cop guy who um, is incredibly trigger happy, and um, oh, little booklet. But yeah, no, this is he kind of um, he's just incredibly trigger. He's a real sort of. I guess this series is like a sort of parody of the kind of um, Dirty Harry. Um, you know, kind of uh, renegade cop sort of genre of movies. This was in the sort of 80s, so I mean, it's kind of post, um, like a post modern sort of parody of that. Um, and this guy's a sort of, you know, he's a dirty cop um, kind of stereotype, um, and he sort of bumbles around from 
you know, adventure to adventure. But yeah, that's a pretty funny series from what I remember. I haven't seen it in like say fucking years, but from what I remember, it was pretty good. Next up, Slipknot Disaster Pieces. This is uh, basically um, Slipknot live at the London Arena back when there was such a thing. Um, comes with quite a, a ba very plain booklet. It's just some some pictures of the band and stuff. Not an awful lot in there, but I mean, it's it's a pretty cool set. I mean, it's uh, it's got the show. It's from the Iowa tour, so it's basically all my favourite Slipknot stuff that they play. Um, because you know my my two favourite Slipknot albums are the first two. So, uh, but yeah, no, and there's there's music videos from that kind of um, time frame on there as well. So uh, you know that's cool. Next up, we have uh, Volumino. Um, this is, um, again, this is the band when they were um, doing, I th I'm guessing this was around the time of like Volume 3. Um, and yeah, this is basically just like a documentary type thing looking at their life. I, again, I haven't seen this in fucking ages. Um, I don't remember. I don't think it was very good, though. I think it was all a bit kind of, you know, choppy and cut together and not really that insightful. But, you know, whatever. We'll move on. Next up. <laughs> Snakes on a Plane. Um, I fucking love this movie. Um, yeah, Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, there's a plane with snakes on it. Great stuff. Absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah. You gotta watch. You gotta watch Snakes on a Plane. It's brilliant. And next up, this one would probably be good for a review. Actually, Snuff Movie. This is a British horror movie um, from the mid two thousands. I'm guessing. Let's see, two thousand and six. Yeah. Um, it's directed by the guy who did um, uh, the, ca uh, the the Candyman. I've forgotten his name. Uh, but but yeah, no, it's um, it's it's all right. Um, I mean. The plot is stupid, and the film clearly doesn't really know what it's trying to do. Um, it's kind of a bit of a retelling of the Manson family in a way. Um, but yeah, no, fucking God, what a, what a bad movie. It, it, it is really a bad movie, but it's quite an entertaining bad movie. I mean, this movie clearly has no idea what the fuck it wants to be. Um... But it does have some pretty interesting ideas in terms of the way it's made and whatnot that it, it sort of plays on. So yeah, that's Snuff Movie. Next up, we've got a Mel Brooks comedy, Spaceballs. Um, awesome Star Wars parody, um, of course, um, with uh, oh, who's in it? Rick Moranis and John Candy. Really, really entertaining stuff. Um, I mean... I, I, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. I mean, I do enjoy it, but I mean, this this whole thing, I think if you're a Star Wars fan, this is the sort of thing you either love or hate, this kind of parody. Um, but yeah, I think this is a really entertaining movie. So yeah, that's Spaceballs. Next up, uh, a bit of Giallo with Spasmo. Um, this is directed by um, Umberto Lenzi, I think. Uh, yeah, Umberto Lenzi, who did Cannibal Ferox. Oh, yeah, it says, does say Cannibal Ferox on the front, yeah. This is released by um, 88 Films as part of their cult cinema collection. Um, yeah, Spasmo, it's uh, a sort of giallo mystery thriller type thing. Um, it's kind of slow. Um, it takes a while to get going. Um, and the... Um, the problem is that, that it's kind of like all of the good stuff's at the end, you know, it's, it's just most of it is, I mean, it's about 90 minutes long um, and, you know, aside from the last sort of 15 minutes, it's, it's rather slow and unwieldy. Um, but yeah, no, it was an okay film. I didn't think it was too bad. Um, again, that would possibly quite, be quite another good, a good candidate for a review. So, yeah, we'll move on. Next up, Spider-Man. Um... Yeah, this is the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Um, this is the first DVD I ever owned um, that was mine. I got this for Christmas um, when this movie was like the new hot shit. Um, 
This is a pretty good movie. I like the original um, Sam Raimi Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire and uh, Willem Dafoe and um, what's her face with the nipples. Um, yeah, this is a really, really good movie, actually. Um, I'm not a comic book movie person, but I really enjoyed this. And I mean, the DVD itself, I'll never get rid of it because, like I say, it's just nostalgia for me. Um, this was, like I say, my first DVD. Um, so yeah, that's Spider-Man. Um, I've also got the uh, sequel, Spider-Man 2, here. Um, yeah, this is an alright. Again, like, this is another movie that I have not seen for donkeys. Um, but, but yeah, no, this is a, an alright movie. This is the one with um, Doc Ock, isn't it? Um, but, yeah, no, it's... it's um, yeah, I, I seem to remember it being being a, a fulfilling sequel. I've never seen Spider-Man 3 um, because I was going to see it, um, but I was grounded uh, The when it came out. When my friends were going to see it, I was my parents grounded me. I don't remember why, but um, so I never got to go and sit with my friends, and I've never seen it since. Um, apparently, that's quite a good thing, but, uh, you know, whatever. And we'll finish on this one. Uh, Straw Dogs. I have reviewed Straw Dogs on the channel. I will leave a link to it in the description. Um, if you want to see my thoughts on Straw Dogs, then yeah, just head there. Um, but I mean, Straw Dogs, Dustin Hoffman in uh, the Sam Peckinpah um, home invasion rape revenge thing. Um, yeah, no, this is a really cool movie. I like Straw Dogs quite a lot. So yeah, check that one out. Um, also check out my review of it um, so you can hear more in depth what I think. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'll see you next time I decide to put up a review or something. Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, but usually I'll, I'll, I'll come back with a new video every few days. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this part of the DVD collection. Uh, see you on the next one.